Hello and welcome to Round Table. The window may well be closing to stop the spread of monkeypox. That's according to scientists advising the World Health Organization. While the majority of experts voted against declaring the outbreak an emergency in an unprecedented move, they were overruled by the WHO's Director General. Is monkeypox an emergency? And can we stop the spread? Very good to have your company. I'm David Foster. Endemic in Africa for decades, a handful of cases in Britain in early May signaled that the outbreak had moved into Europe. Cases are currently doubling every two weeks, raising concerns that it will take several months for the outbreak to peak. Beyond Africa, monkeypox is spreading chiefly in men who have sex with other men, putting sexual health clinics on alert for new cases. Perhaps worryingly, German scientists have released a study that found mutations in one of the 47 cases they sequenced that could help monkeypox spread in people more easily. We'll discuss those mutations in just a moment, but first let me introduce from Ibadan in Nigeria, Oyewale Tomori, Professor of Virology at the Redeemers University, Ede. We go to Oxford in the UK next and see Emilia Skiermunt, evolutionary virologist at the University of Oxford Vaccine Group, and then to Scotland, to Edinburgh to be precise, and Neil Mabbott, Professor of Immunopathology at the University of Edinburgh. Neil, it is spreading quite rapid. I'll bring up some figures in, in just a moment. Is it right to call it an emergency? Well, uh, an emergency is quite an alarming word, and, and the WHO are choosing their words carefully. But what we are seeing is this disease spreading into many countries now around the world. It's spread far beyond now Europe, where we saw the, the, those first cases. So what we what we need to do now by calling it an emergency is get countries to work together to stop as quickly as possible those chains of human-to-human -human transmission. Because once we can do that as, as quickly as possible, we can stop the disease becoming endemic elsewhere. Let me go through some World Health Organization figures. Uh, this is for Europe. There's a forecast that by the end of this week, there'll be 27,000 cases in 88 countries, up from almost 18,000 in 70 countries, roughly 70. And that is within the last week. 80% in Spain, Germany, the UK, France and Netherlands. And I know we'll talk about this in more detail, but generally I believe monkeypox has a fatality rate of between 3 and 6%. Depends upon which strain. If it is an emergency, Emilia, what happens if it's not controlled? If it's not controlled, it probably will uh, be just spreading in the community. And also, we need to remember that when viruses infecting people, they also have a possibility to mutate. Uh, so they can change their uh, characteristics. They can uh, become more transmissible. They can become more deadly. So that is, uh, that is something which we need to be aware of. Although this virus is a virus which is not... Uh, uh, which does not uh, mutate as quickly as, for example, COVID, uh, SARS-CoV-2, sorry, uh, because it's DNA virus and not RNA virus, which has much, much quicker um, mutation rate in comparison to, for example, uh, monkeypox. Although in Nature Medicine magazine, I've just read that the virus mutated 50 times since 2018, and that is 12 times more than was expected. That's a surprise? It is a surprise, and that means that uh, there is a possibility that this virus was uh, circulating in the uh, community, like in the population, human population, uh, for uh, a longer time uh, than we thought, at least in the in the uh, other countries than Africa, where it is endemic. Oh yeah, Wally, cast your mind back uh, roughly 40 years. And uh, I was a younger journalist and you were a younger doctor and we first heard the words HIV and AIDS. Is there a concern, perhaps this is why the WHO is, is sounding the alarm, is there a concern that because this, as AIDS was then thought to be largely um, a gay disease or bisexual disease, men to men or men to bisexuals, um, that it could be classified in the same way by the public and sort of thought, well, it's not going to affect me, I needn't worry. 
but in the end, you might have to. Yeah, thank you very much. I think you raised a very important point about whether this was an emergency or not. I think it was an emergency 40 years ago, not today. And WHO declared an emergency now is like 30 years too late. Not only that, even for Europe, it's two months too late. Because Europe has already started taking action without waiting for WHO to declare it an emergency. Unfortunately, Africa waited 40 years for WHO to declare an emergency. And there's a lesson there for that. I think before we have international emergency, there's first a national emergency. And I think African countries wake up and learn a lesson, take action, just like Europe did about this matter, and declare their emergency, work on it, without waiting for WHO. Are, are, you, are you saying that um, those of you who are leading health professionals in certain parts of Africa have been saying for two generations that this is an emergency? Or is it perhaps, as I, as I read in some of the notes I was given, um, from you of your views that, in fact, you don't regard it as so much of a problem in Africa because you've had to live with it for so long? It's a combination of the two. Now, first of all, in the terms of a disease, it's not rated like you have yellow fever or COVID. It's been how many cases? 500 cases over a period of time. But that's in West Africa. In DR Congo, they report thousands of cases annually that's where the emergency is. That's where action should have been taken. I think in West Africa, the fatality rate is around about 1% of the, the strain that comes from there. Central Africa, Congo, you mentioned 10%. 10, 10%. Um, what are the differences? Do you want to tell me the differences between the two types of virus that are infecting people, why one is much more dangerous than the other? And in fact, it's the West African one, I believe, that we have see most of um, in Europe. Yeah, luckily, I, I think for certain reasons, uh, there are different clades, different kinds of viruses. Uh, some in one form or the other have become more virulent. And then a combination of the environment where they are, the, the style, lifestyle of the uh, issues of uh, immunocompromised disease, uh, all those are combinations which come into play in the outcome of a, of a virus. I think luckily for us, what is raging in parts of the West, the one that came from the West Africa click. And it's quite a big surprise that, you know, that, that has been, although travel from different parts of Africa, it's been the West African click that has set you. Uh, but I think it's good news, way, uh, rather than if you're on the other side, the uh, DR Congo won't have ravaging other parts of the world. Is it, Neil, I'll come to you on this one, and Amelia, you, you may want to say something too. Is, is it simply that uh, we are in a world where people travel um, a great deal more than they did before, and the world is opening up after a pandemic, and therefore we are seeing the virus uh, finds it much more easily, easy to get around. Or has something else changed to allow it to, to move out of these parts of Africa and into the wider world? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the, the virus is simply exploiting an opportunity, just as uh, SARS-CoV-2 did, which, which caused the, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we, we, we know that this virus has an animal reservoir in parts, parts of Africa, and the more that humans encroach into the, the wild areas of Africa where the disease is prevalent, there's an opportunity for it to, to spread into humans. So that, that's how the disease can spread sorry, sorry. Into is, is that Is that by having close contact with these animals? I'm assuming monkeys you're talking yeah. about here, or by eating their meat, or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the disease is called monkeypox, but uh, I'm sure the panelists would, would uh, argue that that's perhaps not the correct phrase to use for this disease because it also affects certain rodent species. In fact, more predominantly, perhaps, these rodent species. So it's either through being close contact in their natural environments or, or through handling uh, so-called bushmeat uh, uh, as well, or, or being bitten or scratched, etc., from an infected animal. So that's how the disease can spread into humans. But you, you raise the point, yes, we live in a very highly interconnected world now. So an infected person in one of these areas can very quickly, within a few hours, be on the other side, uh, side of the world, unbeknown to them, infected with monkeypox, and then inadvertently transmitted to and, other and is, people. And is there a danger, as I suggested to Oya Wiley, that we don't take it as seriously at the beginning, 
as was the case with the HIV AIDS epidemic at the beginning of the 1980s, and therefore it will spread even more quickly with yeah. disastrous results. Is that, is that a real fear? Uh, uh, abs abs uh, absolutely. And that's why it's been called now an emergency, because we need to get countries now to take this seriously, to improve diagnosis, treatment, help for those uh, infected, etc. So we can snub out that human to human transmission. And as our African correspondent mentioned, it is absolutely right. For, for decades, this disease has been prevalent. Countries have been raising this as an important issue that should be taken seriously. But it's now taken the, the situation where the disease has now infected, you could, you could argue, rich Western countries that we're, we're now putting much more focus and attention onto it. Oh, yeah, Wally, I'm going to come to you about vaccines in a moment, but, uh, Emilia, I want to bring this up with you first of all. Let me read this out. The only monkeypox vaccine to be approved by the US and Europe is called Gineos, also known as Invermune, Invernex, made by Bavaria Nordic, and it estimated to cost about $100 for each dose. A Danish vaccine maker can produce 30 million a year, doses, that is, and the US ordered more than 4 million, the UK more than 100,000, and the EU more than 160,000 doses of this monkeypox vaccine. Does it stop you getting it, or does it stop you getting really sick once you've got it? That's the problem with this vaccine. It wasn't very well tested, in fact. And uh, in uh, we know that uh, it was used only in a couple of, uh, of quite small clinical trials. It wasn't widely used. Uh, so we don't really know how really effective this vaccine would be, especially if we're talking about uh, vir viral, uh, different viral strains, uh, if we're talking about a virus which changed uh, a little since, uh, since the development of this vaccine. Uh, so at the moment, it's hard to say. Uh, some, uh, the study which was done on this vaccine says that it is 85% effective uh, against uh, getting the symptoms. Uh, but again, it's really hard to say at the moment uh, because we don't have uh, very well uh, research uh, done on the effectiveness of this particular vaccine. Although we have smallpox vaccine, uh, which we know is effective against monkeypox. Uh, and uh, I would say that's probably a much uh, better uh, thing at the moment because we have a bit bigger stocks uh, in many countries of, of smallpox vaccine. Uh, not monkeypox vaccine. But, but you have said that you believe it should be given to infected people or groups that are likely to be infected as a matter of prior priority. What, what about in African countries? No, yeah, Wally will we'll have a th view on this probably. What about those countries that have been saying for a long time, hang on, why don't you give us the vaccine first? We've been asking for it for years. But hang on, we're, we're poor countries, we're unlikely to get it. Uh, that's absolutely true, and uh, African countries should uh, have be prioritized when uh, it goes to the vaccine which could protect people against this disease. And that's why also we right now have this problem uh, in Western countries, because it wasn't really well uh, handled uh, in the places where the disease is endemic. Uh, so. Uh, we will see that uh, over and over again, coming from countries which cannot, uh, which are poorer than Western countries and cannot really afford uh, vaccinating bigger groups of people with very expensive uh, vaccines. Uh, so I think that we need to try to uh, work better as globally uh, and try to prevent such situations at the source. Oh, yeah, Wiley. I mean, I'm sure you're realistic enough to understand that, I mean, let's just go back a year or so, that we, with the COVID vaccine, a lot of countries in Africa weren't getting it, rich countries were. Um, people in Africa cried out for it, they, they didn't get it. The same is unlikely to happen with whatever vaccine you have for monkeypox. But my real question is, and please let me know your thoughts on that, is aren't there more serious things and concerns in Africa than this isolated um, virus that people in many countries have lived with for, for many generations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, this type of question I've been asking, but I'm surprised about what is going on 
with the vaccine or not? And I replied by asking, are you surprised that the sun rises from the east every morning? I didn't know. What has been going on with COVID, with yellow fever, will continue to go on. Because there's no equity in the world. There will not be equity in the world. Equity is not something you get on a platform. You have to fight for equity. And that's where Africa comes. We have a problem in our hands. We take our priority and take action about it. Not by begging, not by pleading, but by taking action and contributing to the equity, not always consuming equity. Having said that, I think the, to me, the priority now is to prevent that virus spread. And the vaccine is not good. You're going to have a few protected by the vaccine. But the basic thing is this is a disease that is transmitted directly by contact. If you identify it, if you do your laboratory activities, isolate the cases, do a proper infection prevention and control, we can bring this under control, as has been done in Africa. So the priority to me is improve disease surveillance, improve laboratory diagnosis, isolate the case, and prevent contact with people. And this can be brought under control. Okay. Bear in mind what is happening in Europe with the spread that is going. It has really nothing to do with the natural way it is spread. So we need to take that into consideration. And if we take that into consideration, we can stop this virus. Okay, have a think about this. Are there more important things for African people and governments to deal with? Perhaps I'll come back to you in just a okay. second. But, but I want to ask you, Neil, um, about what Oyewale is, is saying. It's unlikely, isn't it, that the richer countries are going to say Africa is a priority when we've got a continent there of 50-plus nations. Uh, goodness knows how many people in, in those nations. Only a few cases making its way into Europe at the moment. It's going to be pushed away as, as not really that important. And it's not realistic either, is it? That's probably the reality, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's how it should be. I mean, the important thing is we don't make the same mistakes that we made during the, the, the COVID pandemic. The same thing happened. Western countries uh, took up the, the majority of the vaccine stocks. Here in the UK, we've got a very high coverage of fully vaccinated people. But if we, uh, if we look into Africa, still to two, nearly three years into the pandemic, uh, only a small fraction of those populations have been vaccinated and we need to ensure it's given out equitably. And that has to be on, on public health needs. The only reason uh, I would uh, have uh, thought that the rich countries would want to do it would be for their own self-interest, i.e. to stop it spreading any further, rather than out of any altruistic views of what the African people deserve. Well, well uh, if, if that's what it takes to, to do that, then, then we, we need the messaging to explain to people that it's really important that we do give out the vaccines to those that need it in Africa, because we're seeing the consequences of not doing it now. Uh, I, I guess you, you asked the question that there, 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 there are perhaps some more important diseases or situations where uh, resources could be, be given. I, I would argue that we... We, we have a vaccine which works, uh, and, and that should, should be given out to, to those that need it. And we, 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 we've chatted about the, uh, the, the, the death rate or the fatality rate of this, this uh, uh, disease. From the data I've seen, it's, it's looking quite apparent that the death rate seems to be higher in African countries than it is in, in Western countries, and there'll be all sorts of reasons for that. And so that's another argument for why we should be offering or should have offered the, the vaccine okay. uh, much earlier to, to these, these countries. Amelia, I was going to come to you at this point and ask you about the type of vaccinations that can be, can be got and what the WHO is, is saying about them. But um, Oya Wali, I'd like you to respond to what we heard um, there from Edinburgh and, and tell me what you think the best way of going about this is, making sure that Africans end up with African vaccinations. Thank you very much. I, I, think, I think we need to get away from this, what I call, sorry to use the word, paternalistic attitude. The solution for some of the problem in Africa is Africa. We need help, but we need to do something ourselves. And that's the message I think we need to get around. 
The world should not be going around, Africa is poor, Africa is this, Africa not do that. Enough of that. Which begs Let's the question, the which that. begs the question, why isn't Africa doing it for itself? Exactly. That's the question we should be looking at. Not every year asking Africa is poor, Africa is poor. Time has come for the Africans themselves to come out and solve their problem. I use the word equity. Equity is self-interest. Is in an altruistic world, equity is self-interest. When you have a trouble in the play, the, and the mass government comes down, it says take care of yourself first before you take care of your child. So let's be realistic about it. Africa must continue to do what it needs to do to solve its own problem. I mentioned that it's not don't have to wait for the population to declare international emergency. Started as a national emergency. Let's begin to do something about it. I think too much the world has been saying, uh, you know, Africa must, Africa must be helped. Africa must help itself before it can be helped by outside. Well, part of, I mean, part of, part of the issue, months. surely, is, is that Africa is, is, is not a country. Africa is a collection of countries. Africa is a continent, yes, and they don't, the countries don't always work together. Believe me, we'll have you back when we do a program on what Africa can do to help it, it, itself, Ayoweli. Thank you. But I want to Thank play you. now some clips from what two people at the World Health Organization have said about beating this. WHO recommends target vaccination for those exposed to someone with monkeypox and for those at high risk of exposure, including health workers, some lab workers, and those with multiple sexual partners. At this time, we don't recommend mass vaccination against monkeypox. We do at this moment still believe that this outbreak of monkeypox can be stopped uh, with the right strategies in the right groups. Um, but time is going by and uh, we all need to pull together to make that happen. The right strategies, Amelia, she says, the right objectives, what are they? Uh, we need to have better surveillance of this virus, that's for sure. And we need to try at least stop this transmission uh, in the uh, communities, in the uh, countries which didn't uh, see this viral threat before. Uh, so we need to try to vaccinate people who are at the higher risk on uh, contracting this disease uh, and uh, also health professionals, people who had contact with infected uh, patients. Uh, so that's, that's something which we need to think about. We cannot vaccinate everybody against this uh, infection because uh, we don't have as, uh, that many uh, vaccines. Uh, and some of these vaccines also, uh, the smallpox vaccine cannot be given to, uh, to some people with some particular conditions. So that's also something which we need to uh, have in mind. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, stopping the transmissions uh, and surveillance of this uh, of this virus is the most important now. So it won't spread, it won't establish itself uh, in the populations which uh, didn't have this this particular problem before, uh, and that might help us later to maybe uh, also fight this particular uh, infection, uh, particular uh, disease, also in the endemic countries. Um, let me ask you, in Edinburgh, um, Neil, about the fact that I've read that no women have yet to be infected. I don't know whether that is entirely true, but you'll let me know. But it is a skin-to-skin -skin transmission. It's not an aerosol like, like COVID up, up in the air. And does it only really affect gay and bisexual men and, and not women? In other words, does only half the population need to be concerned? Oh, no, absolutely not. Uh, in this particular uh, outbreak, the, the disease has uh, entered a particular demographic of the population, and we've seen 99% of cases so far in, in males, and they've been predominantly men who have sex with men. But this is, that's important that we communicate to everybody that this disease is transmitted by close contact and anybody is susceptible. Okay, Oya Wale, you're in Africa. Are there other things that you look at that you're concerned about as possibly being um, a global health emergency or do they just come along once in a generation such as this and such as AIDS and COVID we know is different, but there, or is there anything else that we should keep our eyes out for? 
I think that one of the things I mentioned, a disease anywhere that is neglected will spread everywhere. So we need to take care of ourselves. Listen, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for all your wise words. Much appreciated. Good to have you on the program from Nigeria, from Oxford, uh, from Scotland. Thanks for your time and for your advice and for your expertise. And thank you wherever you're watching this edition of Roundtable for taking the time to tune in. From me, David Foster, and the rest of the Roundtable team. Until next time, well, we hope next time, from all of us here, goodbye.